The Walt Disney Company is home to some of the most prolific inventors that go by the title of Imagineers, and I had the chance to interview one. Imagineer and Disney research fellow Lainey Smoot, who has the most patents out of anyone in the company's history, has played a role in bringing to life experiences like the retractable lightsaber at the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser and Madame Leota's spooky seance room. And now for Disney Imagineer and research fellow Lainey Smoot. Imagineering in general is the think tank for all of the parks, consumer products, cruise ships, etc. We design all of those tangible things that you see and are related to Disney. And the sort of the center of the research that's done in Imagineering is in the research and development organization. We're looking far ahead to see what theme parks will be like in the next 20, 30 years, or maybe even the next few years. And Imagineering, by the way, is a term that was invented by Walt Disney himself. He needed technical people to surround him to bring some of his dreams to life. And the Imagineers carry on that same responsibility today. We, we have both creative people, art that in this case meaning art artists, uh, theatrical folks, et cetera. But we provide, in, especially in R&D, the technology that backs them all up. You're the first person at Walt Disney Company to have received over 100 patents from the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. Like, how does it feel? Oh, it's a great it's a great milestone. I've always been an avid inventor and I've been inventing both at Disney and at, at, at the Walt Disney Company and at other places. So it's just the it's just a milestone, but it it's an exciting milestone and it's caused me um, my 15 minutes of fame here. I, I've, I've talked to a lot of people about it. So you guys are basically the brains and the heart. I'd like to, I'd like to think so. I, I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure there are other parts of Disney, of the Walt Disney Company that would say they're also important too. Right now, we've opened an experience in Florida called Star Cruiser, which will allow Star Wars fans, people who have watched the movies over the years, to actually join in the action, to actually be surrounded by the Star Wars, Wars world. And um, there you'll see an extending lightsaber. You know, the lightsaber is the most important or more, most iconic part uh, of the uh, lore of Star Wars. And I've made the most realistic, extending, fully brilliantly lit uh, lightsaber ever. And you'll also be able to battle against a training remote. You might remember the scene in Star Wars where Luke Skywalker has to use the force to block beams, uh, laser beams. And you'll be able to do that at the Star Cruiser also. Um, one of my favorite attractions is uh, the Haunted Mansion and the floating Madame Leota uh, illusion. And if you have gone to the Haunted Mansion, you know that Madame Leota is the center of attraction. She's the person who brings forth the ghost in the Haunted Mansion. And she used to be a disembodied head sitting on a table in what we call the seance room. And now she can fly around in the seance room magically. So it, it was a complex piece of technology to get this to, to work. And um, it was fun doing it. That's a lot. That's really like, that's true engineering there. Can you tell us about one that was particularly challenging for you? Introducing things like video on demand. We, we take it for granted now when we look at streaming channels at home and can fast forward and rewind and have our own, what appears to us to be our own individual video capability. I helped develop that technology when I was at Bell Communications Research. So, you know, modern day streaming is not totally uh, based on what I did, but we were some of the first people to do it. Later on at Disney, I think bringing our attractions to a point where they're more interactive. We did the first sort of scavenger hunt through the parks, uh, the so-called Kim Possible game, where uh, young kids were given cell phones that were communicators. Right. And so they could have fun throughout the parks and special locations in the parks reacted to them as they came up to them 
Did you always know you wanted to apply like your knowledge to the entertainment and theater industry or did it just kind of happen? How did you end up doing it? Okay, so this is an interesting story. When I was at Bell Communications Research about 25 years ago, I invented a thing called the electronic panning camera and patented it. And it was a way for a person to become their own director of television programming from home. And by that, I mean, you could change the camera angle of the, of the video that you're seeing. Now we demonstrated it and we were, we got a little press on it and the Walt Disney Company found out about it and sent some of their folks to uh, Belcor to see it. They liked the technology and they liked the inventor even more. <laughs> so I was sort of drafted into the Walt Disney Company because of the technology I had invented at other companies. So I, it's interesting, I didn't seek out a career in Imagineering. The Imagineers sought me out to come into the fold. Uh, what do you like most about working as an inventor with Disney? What I love about being an Imagineer is I can wake, especially an inventive one, I can wake up in the morning, have an idea for a cruise ship. Oh, okay, I work on that a little bit. Later in the day, I might be thinking or be consulting to someone that's got a problem with a ride system. Oh, okay, I've got some ride system ideas. Later on, maybe it's something having to do with um, detecting how people are moving so we can adjust the gain to them or something. So you can think of just so many things and it's that variety that I love. On Disney's blog, I read that you're passionate about inspiring the next generation to enter the world of STEAM, especially students of color. How do you do that? And what do you think is needed to get younger people interested and in, into the field? As I was coming up, I didn't see role models. Um, I grew up in Brownsville, Brooklyn, relatively poor area, and we were relatively poor. <laughs> and so, and as a result, um, I never saw, for instance, a black engineer until I almost was one. A lot of the hard work could have been a little bit less if I had seen a role model or had someone who, who could do it. So I'm, I'm very anxious to, to reach back to folks who are thinking about careers in science and say, hey, you can have fun, you can have a job that you will love for the rest of your life, you'll be well paid, and you'll be able to use your mind in ways that other, uh, you know, careers uh, don't really do. Um, so let me tell you something we've done recently the Disney company is reaching out to the HBCUs even more strongly than in the past. And we have programs, for instance, Disney on the Yard. And the Yard at an HBCU, a historically black college and university, is the place where most of them, the social mingling goes on, where all of the main uh, information dissemination goes on. And by even having a program that is called Disney on the Yard, it is a signal for, for us to get those young black students in who can contribute to our STEM technology at, at the Walt Disney Company. You know, we want to be a welcoming place for everyone. I would say Disney is not perfect, but it's trying very hard to make changes both to its, in, its internal workforce, because we're all uh, realizing that we service a diverse group of people who come to our parks. We need to have a diverse group of people designing the things that go into our parks, cruise ships, hotels, toys, et cetera. Lastly, do you have a piece of advice for those who want to follow your path? Find out what you like and love and do more of it. Don't let anyone discourage you from what it is. For me, it happened to be electricity and electronics. If you love art, do as much art as you can. Um, and don't let anyone stop you from it because I think we all have a gift and some of us have multiple gifts. I got one gift, <laughs> but, but, but anyway, <laughs> but, but, but um, there are lots of people who have gifts. Parents reach out to your children and support them in whatever way they want to go. One of the things, you know, I often mention my dad, but I'll mention my mom in this case, who just had unbelievable belief in me. I got my technology from my dad. I got my support and you do what you want to do, Lanny, and I will help you in any way I can. I've never gone to college. I don't know a lot of things that you already know, 
but I believe in you. And you and that's super important. 